decided to do the community mount because Shadowlands was right around the corner and the main theme of Shadowlands was player agency and player choice. So this seemed like a great opportunity to engage the community and let them choose the next mount for the World of Warcraft. Basically what we did was we came up with five ideas and we've actually invited all players to vote on the one that they like the best. It was interesting because we actually had a lot of internal debates about whether we would provide concept art for these pieces or not. I think we're all very glad that we did it because the artists in our community really engaged and came up with some awesome art to bring these ideas to life. As the lead art producer for World of Warcraft, I work with a team of three other art producers and together the four of us are responsible for the tracking and coordination of all of the art assets that go into the game. When the Wandering Ancient was chosen, I was given the task to bring it to life. First step in the task was to get together a reference board. I looked at fan art done by the community. I collected reference from past iterations of ancients. That actually was like a huge base on where I began, especially if it's an asset that is, you know, a rehashing of something familiar. We've seen lots of different type of ancients, but we've yet to see one that you could ride on. And so it seemed to make sense that if we were gonna make one, it would line up with the pantheon of past ancients. So we have ancients like the Ancient of War, the Ancient of Lore. Their look aesthetically fits their purpose. And so looking back and researching that and seeing that is what helped me kind of inform where I went from there. Once I have that reference board put together and I take a look at it, I start drawing real small. I look for a shape that is kind of a good base to work off of. And then I'll start to work in more specific details as more of the larger shapes start to make sense. I wanted it to feel like a natural grove that a player may stumble upon. And then they just take a seat on this conveniently saddle looking root system and then suddenly it uplifts and the character's surprised he's found himself on a ancient the whole point of the concept it's just all it is is a blueprint or a guide from there i open up 3d max i start modeling it I ended up keeping a lot of the foliage that was in the originals ancient because a lot of that stuff was already there. And then there was a couple major parts of the creature that had to be created from scratch. So that would be like his main torso and his head and the tree. And for those, I used ZBrush to kind of sculpt out a mesh to use as a base to retopo a low poly model that would be acceptable for the game engine. Finally, you know, for the texture, I used 3D Coat. It's a great, powerful tool. Anybody who wants to do hand-painted textures should definitely look into using it. When rigging starts to build the rig for the animators, uh, we talk it over with the designer and we decide to figure out what the best kind of topology is for better deformation for the animators to get a more lifelike capture. Deformation is basically how your skin moves on the bones, so the geometry itself gets attached. As far as how your arm moves and how your skin moves when you articulate your wrist, your elbows, beard, ears, you want to kind of get a general sense of how the head is going to turn or how the elbow is going to bend and get a better understanding of how it's going to deform. After that, you add controls for the animators so they'll be able to move those bones without having to worry about what's underneath the hood. They can just go for the visual look where they have the controls and animate just like a puppet. After character art and rigging had finished with the model, they passed off to animation to breathe some life into it. The Wondering Ancient was a bit of a unique starting point. We had animations available to us from 16 or 17 years ago that really helped capture the spirit and personality for the creature. We wanted to use those as foundations to build upon, and with the updated rig, we were able to go in and add new motion and life on top of this creature. We do this by a process called keyframe animation, which follows the rules set by traditional animation in the past. We're able to use 3D software to use the rig and model to bring personality and motion into the character. 
animation is really drawn from inspiration from the real world. Watching creatures and animals, how they move, you pick up these little things you might not think of. So it's really important to study the movement of nature and other humans to really figure out how your animation might better sell the motion and the physics behind it. A lot of creatures and characters in World of Warcraft don't exist in the real world. For this situation, we like to film ourselves for reference. It helps us get in the mindset and feel the personality of the character or creature and really helps sell the motion that they might use. So my first step as a sound designer is to look at the model, to look at the animations that the art team has already made and get familiar with the personality of the creature, with the, the, the material types that they've used, you know, how fast is it, how, how does it move, uh, and then I can start putting together sounds that will help reinforce that. So what is it made out of? Well, in this case, we have, obviously, it's a tree, so he's got his, his creaking wood elements, he's got his, his shaking leaves, but he's also, he's a creature that, that's sentient, he, he has a personality, so what would he sound like? What kind of vocalizations would he make? Just basic walking animation. <laughs> So working with Glenn on the Ancient was awesome. Uh, he, Glenn has defined so much of the sound of, of Warcraft over the years and he's, he's already contributed his voice to, to helping to define what these creatures have sounded like in previous iterations. Uh, so knowing that we were going to make a, a newer version of it for this mount uh, was a cool opportunity to have him jump in and, and add his vocal layers. Uh, knowing that it's, it's maybe a little smaller than the other Ancients that have been in WoW in the past and it's uh, maybe a little more inquisitive, a little friendlier. To help with the vocal layers, I'm going to do a creaking layer as well for the, the idols and longer ones. So, one major tool for sound design is using layers to kind of composite together a coherent sound. So, in the case of, of this huge tree creature, he has layers of, of leaves rustling, layers of branches moving as he shifts around. He's got his footsteps that are built out of a thud, the tree trunk itself kind of shifting and creaking and groaning, and then layers of his vocalizations as he's kind of making little idle sounds. So all of that comes together to create this one coherent set of sounds, but uh, it's actually built out of a huge number of individual parts. It feels like a big organic creature where every time he moves every one of his footsteps, his kind of, his overall movement, there's a lot of variety there. One of the ideas that came up was the changing of the colors of the leaves with the seasons. I thought it was really fun to have these little extra Easter eggs, I guess, hiding on, on the mount. And it really helps bring the character's story and personality to a more unique place. The team also added a little caterpillar to the top of the tree as a nod to the caterpillar that did not win the contest. Oh yeah, the grub. I didn't have any part of that. That's actually all John. He did it himself. When I had initially pitched the concept to the team, Kelvin Tan, he suggested, hey, why don't we put something like, I don't know, maybe like a little caterpillar or something like that. So that actually ended up being, for me, one of the, the more kind of standout features for the, for the mount because it, it almost looks like the, the caterpillar himself is in control of the mount, kind of sitting back. What I would like to see if the community take from this is to see how much, you know, emotion and love was put into it. Most artists here are also gamers and are also WoW players. So it's one of those things where there's another group of players that are with the community, that are part of the community, that are just as involved in this as the community is. So hopefully the first time you summon this, this mount, it's an awesome experience. That the, the visual and the sound just feel really rewarding and it's a super cool thing to hear. And the first time you do the mount special and see its cool animations and all the sounds and you start riding around the world and, and hearing the different little idols and sounds that it makes. I hope that that matches the level of enthusiasm that people had for you know seeing this thing and, and all the cool fan art people made for it. You know, continuing to support the game, you know, continuing to be passionate and excited for what we do. Um, it's really a big part of what keeps me going to continue to work on this game. It makes me just feel super humbled and excited to continue doing what I do, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.